So lovely to see. I was just scrolling through the screens and seeing so many familiar faces. Really uh, delightful to see people from the New York, New Jersey Sangha and people uh, from other Sanghas. Um, Achara City, I can't even believe like my, oh, I, I used to live in, uh, in the Bay Area. So uh, great to see see friends from there as well. Um, and it's kind of funny to see Elaine who is upstairs on the screen. Hello. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm, um, so I'm, was invited to talk this evening a little bit from my experience working. So I, I do two, I have two jobs at the hospital. My main job is that I am the mind, a mindfulness educator for the network. So I teach mindfulness courses to patients and staff, uh, but I'm also a hospital chaplain and I trained as a chaplain. Um, at St. Luke's. So I did a couple of years of intensive training. And, and in my training, I worked my uh, service lines, as we call them, were uh, onco oncology, um, palliative care, and I also served the medical intensive care unit. So you can imagine that in, in the work that I was doing in my two years where I was full time there was very, a lot of um, kind of being with patients and being with um, family as people are dying, um, as people are receiving often unforeseen terminal diagnosis or just kind of coming in at, towards the end of life. Um, and then during the last couple of years, I've been part of a, a team at various points providing support to the staff at our hospital um, during COVID. So again, kind of going into uh, work with the staff in the intensive care unit, um, really been, and I'm, I'm looking at knowing that a few of you on the screen work in hospitals. So um, it's, it's been a really, especially in the hospitals, it's been a really uh, brutal kind of few years, honestly. Um, I know in, in our in, intensive care unit, in one day they had 10 people die. So, you know, they've just, it's, it's been a kind of a, a wave after wave after wave of uh, people dying. So, you know, here we are at the, at the anniversary or the celebration of the Buddha's passing. And um, of course, it feels like a really important time to reflect upon and consider this uh, reality of death and dying, which of course, interestingly, when you work in a hospital in, you know, often in sort of emergent, urgent care situations, uh, so it's not, it's not the same as kind of um, working in outpatient, but it's, it's really often kind of very sort of sudden, urgent things that are, in, that are happening. And as a chaplain, we're often on hand in those situations. So it's very interesting, and I think in the little introductory blurb that I sent to Shidayu, what I find so remarkable is what can kind of, you know, on the one hand, you're often meeting a situation, especially for the patients and family, where it's like, what just happened? You know, what just happened? Um, at the same time as what can emerge from that is often just incredible, um, incredible insights, incredible moments of clarity, um, you know, and, and, and not that as well. It can be, you know, I don't want to sugarcoat what can often be a very messy, uh, messy business. But there is something that's always quite remarkable to me of those, those kind of emergent moments of clarity. So what I kind of wanted to, to reflect on today is this, um, this reality that, you know, the Buddha, of course, was very clear about um, asking us to really reflect upon the inevitability, the reality that we are all, we are all going to die at some point and the time of death and the way of death is absolutely and always uncertain to a degree. You know, so, so we all kind of know this is coming and yet, um, and I wanted to talk today about what was in, in one article uh, I think in the New York Times was called the misalignment problem, how often our kind of actions are misaligned with this reality of uh, this very pressing sort of thing that, that is going to happen to all of us. So I wanted to just start with, uh, well, I've already started, but so the Buddha had these five daily contemplations. Um, so, so these are the contemplations. I am the nature to age. 
I have not gone beyond aging. I am of the nature to sicken. I have not gone beyond sickness. I am subject to the results of my own actions and I'm not free from these karmic effects. I'm of the nature to die. I have not gone beyond dying. All that is mine, beloved and pleasing, will change, will become otherwise, will become separated from me. So, in a way, what this points to is something that we're all we're all likely to be touched by, and especially at the moment through this pandemic. So I'm just curious, um, just a show of hands, how many of you in the last year or so have experienced a death? You know, it might not, may not necessarily be a COVID death. So let's just everybody put your hands up and keep your hands up and just invite everybody just to look at your screen and just scrolling through, just, just seeing. So keep your hands up, how many of us uh, have experienced death at some point in these last few years. Yeah, so so we're kind of seeing a lot. So just notice how many people have their hands up. Like most, more than half of us have our hands up. So, you know, really kind of just taking in um, this, this is something we're, we're living with right now in a very real way. Yeah, thank you. And what I, so what I want to suggest is that there is a, a wonderful opportunity, uh, a wonderful teaching that really can help us uh, in a way to align our lives, to align kind of how we're living moment to moment through something as, um, as kind of challenging and difficult and, and really painful uh, as what we're, we're going through. And I imagine many of you had your hands up it may not have been COVID related, you know, that the life goes on and death is always unfolding around us uh, in some way. So in, um, so I, I did write down this article in the New York Times, which is definitely worth a read and I think you can find it easily on the internet, is um, it, it, it's titled, To Be Happier, Start Thinking More About Death. So kind of a, a very interesting and provocative title, To Be Happier, Start Thinking More About Death which, you know, in a way, for many people, that would be like, that's kind of morbid. But um, it, it, the article was really talking about this misalignment problem. Um, so, you know, we have goals, or all of us have goals around what we feel is important in our lives. Um, but what was interesting, so in this article, they were quoting a study that was done in 2004 in, um, I think Daniel Kahneman was part of this study, and they surveyed a group of women to compare how much satisfaction they derived from kind of voluntary daily activities that they engaged in. So um, what was really interesting, or maybe not so interesting or surprising, was that their daily activities did not align at all with what they reported that they got satisfaction from. So they, get, they reported, this group of women reported that they derived much greater satisfaction from prayer, uh, from worship and meditation than from television. And yet, so these are voluntary activities, and yet the average respondent spent more than five times longer watching television than they engaged in spiritual activities. So in a way, this, this points to this misalignment problem. Um, and in a way, what they, I think what he says is that this might well underestimate the problem. So uh, something else that I also, a US survey that from 2004 showed that the average citizen, so the average US citizen spends four times longer watching television than socializing and communicating and 20 times longer on TV than engaging in spiritual activities. Now, I'm sure looking around, none of us do that, of course. Um, but we probably do things, um, you know, that there, there may be a little bit of things that we're kind of doing that are a misalignment problem. Like how much time do we spend, you know, surfing on our, on our sort of Facebook page or um, Instagram, or how much are we spending on the news? So in, um, in January, I did a retreat, uh, solitary, and I 
came back from my retreat and I just had this moment of like, I, I do not need to be on the news. The news is not my friend. It doesn't support my <sighs> nervous system to be calm. It doesn't support me to feel kind of uplifted. So I've had, I, I have been on a news fast, which by the way, even when you go on a news fast, you, you know exactly what's happening because people tell you, did you hear about? But it's been really interesting for me not to spend the time that I spent. And I, I wasn't watching the news, but I was a kind of, you know, I had my little routines in the day when I would read, you know, The Guardian or whatever, The New York Times. So just becoming aware of what are we spending our time doing? Um, so in a way, I think what was interesting for me about reading this article is the conclusion um, isn't necessarily that we need to stop wasting time. But in a way, how do we find a kind of systematic way to raise the scarcity of time into our consciousness? So in Buddhism, we could say contemplating our impermanence or kind of starting to bring this precious resource of our time into consciousness can really be a way that we can work with this misalignment rather than all these shoulds. Oh, I should be doing more of this or I shouldn't be doing that. But just really um, thinking about what am I doing with my precious and valuable time? Um, so I, I just want to read, I, some of you may not love Sam Harris. I don't always love him, but he often has interesting things to say. So this is a, a Sam Harris quote. Most of us do our best to not think about death, but there's always part of our minds that knows this can't go on forever. Part of us always knows that we're just a doctor's visit away from being starkly reminded of the fact of our own mortality or of the mortality of those close to us. The one thing people tend to realize at moments like this is that we've wasted a lot of time when life was normal. And it's not just what we did with our time and that we spent too much time working or compulsively checking emails. It's that we cared about the wrong things. We regret that we cared about, we regret what we cared about. Our attention was bound up in petty concerns when life was normal. This is a paradox, of course, because we all know this epiphany is coming. Don't you know this is coming? You know this. And yet, if you're like most people, you'll spend most of your time in this life tacitly assuming that you'll live forever. Like watching a bad movie for the fourth time. These things only make su sense in the light of eternity. So I think, you know, he's, he's pointing to something really valuable here. So, you know, that in a way, like that last line, that death is what gives life its preciousness. And if we, you know, if, imagine if we lived forever, um, time and what we do with our time wouldn't have the same kind of sanctity. So this idea, you know, in a way we can think about, um, again, that sort of misalignment problem, raising into our consciousness the preciousness of this moment uh, and what we're doing. And you could say that we don't have to wait until death to answer these questions. So every moment in our life is absolute in itself. You know, it's right now, this is all we have. This is all there is. So if we think about there's nothing more than this present moment, there's not, there's no past moment, there's no future moment then you know when we really pay attention to every little moment um, in, in a way that raises into our consciousness how precious this moment is how much how much richness there is in this moment so another way is to say that death is always present in every moment as is life so in a way this is kind of the yin and the yang of of kind of our lives it's the razor's edge that's present we could say in every breath so the in-breath, we can say, is life. The out-breath is like letting go. And we can just know that every breath, each breath could be our last. So thinking about those kind of, you know, daily contemplations, um, imagine what you do or what you, if you knew that kind of this was going to be your last your last week on this planet, if you knew this was gonna be your last week, or if you knew this was your last year. I just um, supported uh, a lovely, wonderful couple as one of them was dying. She died in October. So I spent about eight months with them, meeting with them every week. 
Um, and it was it was just a very very you know as a chaplain I don't often get to do that in the hospital it's often like I might see a I might see a patient two or three times uh, as they're dying so this was really an opportunity for me to be in relationship to somebody as they're kind of considering and what was so interesting and I think if you read what chaplains um, and people who work with the dying will say is there's a lot of humor I mean this woman was so funny so much of the time and I'm, I'm looking at Achira City on my screen and thinking about Savannah Prabha when as she was going through her dying process and how much humor and uh, and goodwill and you know just incredible um, presence there can be when you have that knowledge that you don't have long. So somebody, remember somebody saying to me, you know, if you knew that your next vacation was gonna be your last vacation, what kind of vacation would you choose to go on? You know, would, would you choose to go lay on the beach or would you say, you know, maybe this is a time I wanna spend with my friends. Um, so thinking about this question, this bringing really um, alive this question of like, how do we start to bring into our consciousness that sense of the preciousness of this human life, the preciousness of this moment that we are in right now and all that it can give us. Um, and how do we kind of just, just for ourselves, and maybe that could be a little ref, you know discussion point in the groups, where do we have our own misalignment problem? If we think about things that we know, we, we would say, I really value this, uh, this not so much. Are we actually finding ourselves spending more time doing things that maybe we don't value? And then those things that really bring us satisfaction and joy, how much time are we spending? How much time are we, you know, when we sit on the cushion and we think, oh, you know, that, that gets kind of squeezed into 20 or 30 minutes, but do we squeeze other things into, in that same way? So just an opportunity to kind of recognize the uh, the amazing teaching there is um, in this consideration of you know that that death is is an inevitable part of life and and when that it, and when you work in a hospital you really understand that we really truly don't know when that's coming um, I just heard today of a, a good friend back in the UK who has terminal cancer you know this is as you get older, <laughs> this becomes more and more of a reality, more and more people you know. Uh, so, thank you.